All right, our last video involving acetals and ketals is going to talk about, hey, let's say we have an acetal or a hemiacetal, and we want to break that up and go back to the, you know, hemiacetal or go back to the aldehyde. So just like how we said hemiacetals can form or hemiketals and hemiacetals can form both under basic and acidic pHs, um, you can do the same thing with hydrolysis, okay? It's a reversible reaction. On the other hand, acetal or ketal hydrolysis only happens under acidic pHs, all right? But we'll get to that right after we talk about hemiacetals. So the mechanism I'm gonna draw also applies to ketals. Uh, it happens at, it can be catalyzed at a pH greater than seven because what the base can do is it can pluck off this H and then the resulting negative charge, you can push those electrons uh, to form a double bonded C to, a double bonded oxygen to the carbon, and then that's going to help push out the um, other oxygen. Okay, so that's how the base functions. Uh, what the H does is it's going to protonate the oxygen, and that's going to make it a better leaving group. And when it's a better leaving group, you can hydrolyze this whole thing. And then to get the whole aldehyde formation from there. All you have to do is grab this H, the resulting negative oxygen, push the electrons down there, and you restore your aldehyde. Okay, so hemiacetal hydrolysis, pH greater than seven, pH less than seven. Essentially, this functional group inside a drug can hydrolyze at basic pH and at acidic pH. With acetal hydrolysis, one of the important things to remember is that this only happens at a pH less than seven. So at pH 7 or pH greater than 7, acetals are going to be pretty, pretty stable molecule or pretty, pretty stable functional groups, and they're not going to hydrolyze. Okay, and the reason behind this is because look back at the hemiacetal mechanism, the base has to pluck off a hydrogen in order to make oxygen or in order to like facilitate the pushing of these electrons, which pushes out this oxygen right here. There's no hydrogen with an acetal for the base to act on, okay? Instead, the only thing that can happen is this oxygen right here, um, let me actually color code that a little better. Let me go with red. This oxygen right here can pluck an H off from there, and then that makes it a better leaving group, and we have the OH right there, okay? Um, and then also the oxygen electrons move right there, all right? And then if we want to um, replace this ORH and generates the hemiacetal formation, uh, what we can have is the H2O can now attack this species, and it's going to be aided by the fact that we had some A- generated here, the A- plucks off the H, then we have an OH- attacking here, and then this electron, these pair of electrons pushes back onto the oxygen, and that's going to regenerate the hemiacetal. And then from there, you would just go to uh, this mechanism to the left if you wanted to uh, break it up okay so hydrolysis of acetals and ketals just like you can only form you could form the hemi species under basic or acidic conditions with the hydrolysis you can do it under basic and acidic conditions with acetals you can only form them under acidic conditions and you can only hydrolyze them under acidic conditions so under if you have a ph is seven or greater this hydrolysis reaction it's not going to be very significant. It's going to be really, really slow. So that does it for our discussion of acetals and ketals.